If you're ready to unlock new potential with your Airtable database, then you don't want to miss this video. We're going to be talking about the new scripting block that just released a couple days ago. Now this block is Airtable's biggest advancement that I've seen in the years that we've been working with the software. So you don't want to miss out on this. Stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest to you and you want to see more about how we do that, definitely check out our website. We do offer a free crash course in Airtable to get you up to speed quickly. But without further ado, let's jump into the topic of today's video, and that is the scripting block. And before we get going, I want to mention two things. One, the scripting block is going to require that you understand a little bit of code. Don't get intimidated by that. I'll tell you completely honestly, I don't know JavaScript. I can read very high level code. I took maybe one C++, you know, C++ class like 20 years ago. Uh, my coding is as minimal as it could possibly be. So if you are hesitant to get started with something just because of code, this is about as easy as it gets. So dip your toe in the water and check it out. Also, on that note, Airtable's provided a lot of really cool examples that are going to help us all get up to speed really quick. So, having played with the uh, new block for just a little bit, let's go ahead and jump into my screen and I'm going to show you the things that I've built for this uh, example. So specifically, I have two blocks here. Now the first one is the project tasks script. This came from a template that Airtable had made available on their help, you know, uh, their help uh, support. And I made some tweaks to it just to kind of customize it a little bit. And then similarly, this report script here is going to generate a report based on all of the data in our database. So let's take a look at how these things work. Now, first I'm gonna open up, open these up. Now, before I get to this though, let me just say that the uh, scripting block as all blocks requires a pro subscription. But right now Airtable uh, is offering an extended uh, you know, ability to get to get up and running on a, a pro plan, whether you're on that or not. So check this out. I was uh, just inspecting this myself and it says here, and you know, again, this is as of this thing just having launched, but it says if you're currently on a free plan, you can always click here to get two extra weeks of a pro trial. So if you haven't already done that, if you're not on a pro plan, check it out get 14 days of pro plan because I think you're gonna really love the scripting block and Airtable is gonna make it easy for you to get up and running and testing that out. So beyond that, you would install this block like you would any other block. You just click on install block and you select that block from the list. Uh, it's now being featured as one of the top three blocks and I mean, I think it'll be there for a while. It's really powerful. So let's check out you know these things that I've built. So the first thing is, Inside the settings here, I'll pop this block open and we're gonna actually take a look at the code. Now again, Airtable's put a lot of documentation together for us. So if you want to uh, just see their quick start, you can check this out here. And they have a lot of resources, uh, including the community forum, but also you know some ways to get up and uh, get up to speed really quickly learning JavaScript. And that's what we're gonna be you know needing in order to write these uh, these little scripts. They also put together a series of examples for you. And as I mentioned, this is where I've taken the two uh, scripting blocks that I'm using here. So I've got, uh, if I remember correctly, I think I'm using the custom report here. And what's the other one? The, uh, the records template or record template um, where we're uh, creating project records and associating task records to them. So that's, those are the two that I started with to get where you know I built this. And uh, if you're not familiar with code, you know, if you see these two slashes here at the beginning, that is a comment, right? And so that's kind of where you can write in what the code is gonna do. And then under that, you generally then write the code. So if you're to take a look at these examples, you'll see that this is the part where we're picking tables from the base. This is the part where we're prompting users to pick a template. This is the part where we're creating the project, et cetera, et cetera. And so as I said, you know, I made some adjustments to this to let it uh, unlock a little bit more functionality here, uh, but there's still a lot, again, you know, I don't, I don't 
uh, consider myself fluent in Java. Uh, and so, you know, definitely check this out and, uh, you know, and kind of figure it out on your own. It's, it's fairly straightforward. So what does this do? Well, essentially what this script is going to do is it's going to prompt us to tell it a little bit about the project we're creating. And then it's going to create tasks and assign them to that project based on uh, the variables that we put in. So here, let's go ahead and run it and I'll just show you the example. Let me expand it and we're going to run it. And once I hit that run button, you see that it, the script is now running and it's constantly spinning here, meaning that it's waiting for my input and it's a new project. So what type of project am I creating? Let's say it's a new construction project. Once I click that, it asks me for the project name. I'm going to call this the uh, new construction example and I can hit enter or hit next. Now it asks me, prompts me for the client. Uh, let's say the client here is Acme Incorporated. And once I do that, the scripting is now done. Now you see over here, if I flip over back to my projects, a new project has been created. But more importantly, new tasks have been created and assigned to that project. So if I flip into my tasks here, you can see that these new tasks were just created, these new construction tasks, for the new construction example project that we just created, which is pretty slick. Now you'll notice that I already had an example of a remodel here. So let me go ahead and run this uh, script one more time. This time I'll pick remodel and I'll call this the remodel example. And I'll make the client example client. And as soon as I do this, again, you see a new project created here and it's assigned to this client and then tasks are assigned here as well. Now, the part that's really cool about this is that the tasks are dependent on the project type. So let me flip back into my scripting. And you'll notice that, you know, in the first step, I'm choosing, well, the second step, I suppose, I'm choosing the type of project, either the remodel or the construction project, right? And then we've got a bit of an if statement in our JavaScript here that says, if the type is remodel, then we're going to create these three tasks and we can rename these to be whatever they are. So you could imagine client onboarding, invoice client, you know, whatever those steps are. Or in the case where it's not a remodel project, then it will be going through this, this new construction task. And here we're creating the five different new construction tasks. So you could use a variation of this script. And if you had different projects that you offered inside of your business, as soon as you create that new project, all of those tasks are, are also created at the same time. That's pretty slick. And all of this is done inside of your database with the push of a button and no need for external automation. So very, very cool. Definitely stepping up their game here. Airtable has provided some really neat uh, options for us. Now I'm going to go ahead and create just for the sake of this example, I'm going to create two more projects. Let's suppose I create a new construction project and I'll just call it one, two, three, four, five, six. And I will create uh, a remodel project, 789012. Uh, okay, I just wanted to get some more data in here. Now, once we have these projects in, you know, we can assign leads. This, of course, is a collaborator field, so you can assign different people that you've shared the base with. Or maybe you want to get that granular level on the tasks, right? So maybe you're assigning these tasks to various team members. In either case, uh, let me fill out some data and then as the projects are complete, you can mark them complete. Now, the whole purpose of doing this is so that our report, our second script is really showing off. So let's take a look at running this script here. This one was pretty much just copied and pasted. I didn't make many adjustments to uh, the example that Airtable's put together. So as soon as we start running this, it says project report generator. What would you like to generate? either a completed projects report or an incomplete projects. Let's go with completed projects. We see that we've got three different completed projects. And with the push of a button, I've, I've literally just selected the type. Now it's showing us the two categories. We have two remodels and one new construction project that are complete. And if we look back at our data source, we'll see that is true. One remodel, one remodel, that's two total, one new construction. That's summary, uh, summarizing that data. And then it's also providing a view of what those projects are. 
and it's excluding anything that's been marked incomplete. So we have the Pronovost remodel example, we have the remodel example, and then we have one, two, three. It shows the project lead, it shows the type, it shows the client. This is basically an Airtable view, but it's been automatically generated and snapshotted for us. Now, that's pretty neat, but I think the coolest part is that we can print this. So the output of that script is printable. I can save that as a PDF. I could, you know, do I could do all kinds of things with this. I could, you know, send emails with this information. Uh, I could just print it if I needed a tangible, you know, hard copy of it. All kinds of things. So really neat. And again, you know, just taking a quick look at the scripting here. This, as I mentioned, is something that I pulled out of the examples. I made slight variations so that it accommodated to my specific use case. But this code here was you know, pretty much all just taken from the example. So again, I am really excited to get more and more advanced as, uh, as I learn and teach myself more JavaScript. But again, you don't need to have that uh, background in order to get started. I have minimal background here and I'm already able to do these really cool things. I can't wait to see what's gonna come about in the next couple months as the community embraces this scripting block. Anyhow, I'm gonna wrap with that, but I would love to hear what questions and comments you have, and uh, definitely let us know if we could be of any more assistance. As always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, we have a lot of resources that we've put together on our site, so swing on by and see how we can help. We have a blog that includes free content every week, we also built an Airtable free crash course that'll get you up to speed in under two weeks. And if you're looking for something more advanced, you can book some time to have a discussion with me. I will hop on a Zoom call with you and we can talk about what your needs are and how our company might be able to help. So if that's of interest, swing on by. Look forward to connecting with you soon.